Hello everyone, welcome to the Jarkus Ranger Review. This time we'll be looking at the 20th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Evox Upgraded. Looks like we got a three part endgame here because this picks up right after the end of the last episode. At Grid Battle Force, they are working on rebuilding the Cyber Gate so that they can go into the Cyber Dimension and save Devin who's been captured and stop Evox once and for all. And when I do the first test of it to see if it's working, the plasma from it uh, hits Betty and she gets all super stretchy arms flowing all around. And it's gonna take some work to fix out, but she'll be okay. She always is, and so has Ben. <laughs> but even despite that mishap, they are entirely serious and they're not messing around. Even Ben and Betty. They are like taking everything seriously, even the way they're talking. So the actors know that this is a big deal. Which I like, as they're showing the comic relief characters to actually be extremely competent in knowing when not to mess around at all. I mean, the only uh, mischief with them is not really mischief, because they were testing a transdimensional device and it just affected them a little badly. So already I like seeing the side of Ben and Betty because it shows that they can be extremely mature when they have to be. But then Mayor Daniels bursts on the scene and he confronts the commander for not telling because he never knew his son was the Red Ranger. And he asks her how she feel knowing that her child was always put in danger. And she knows that quite well because she introduces Ravi, her son, you know, the Blue Ranger. Now Adam Daniels is not a uh, impulsive guy. He knows what to do when the stakes are down. I mean he even said that True heroes are courageous in times of danger. Or something along those lines, I forget his exact words. So he asks what he can do to help. I mean, this is no time to let his emotions get in the way of saving the world. Or is it? Because Ravi was going to go through the portal to send some electromagnetic coordinates or whatever so they knew where to teleport to find Evox's based off operations, but the rest are unsure because of the danger. But not the mayor of Coral Harbor, he takes it and he just runs into the salary gate. Even if there is a supervillain on the other side, so is his son. So it's kind of two birds of one stone, but we can definitely see that the man is thinking about his son more than the city. Now inside the cyber dimension, he finds where Devon is, and he's all restrained, guarded by some tronics. Then a brick falls on the ground. So one of them goes to check out what it is. And then the man just grabs a pipe and smashes his head in along with the other guard. And he frees Devin. <laughs> These Daniels boys and their pipes. They should like to hit robots with them. <laughs> the other rangers do locate their coordinates and they go into the cyber dimension. But not just as rangers but inside the zords. All of them put together as the ultra zord. Yep, we finally got an Ultra Zord, and it's in our last episode. <laughs> and then I just form it right away. I mean, they slowly piece it together in the hangar at Grid Battle Force before they deploy it. And of course, they make a big scene coming in like that. So Blaze orders Scrozzle to send some Giga Jones to fight it. It's just got a giant spear and a giant blaster. It just takes his spear and just plows straight through all the Giga Drones. They are nothing to it at all. And before leaving, Commander tells Ravi to complete his mission and bring all the team back. So even despite what happened last time, his mom and commander is making damn sure that he does his job right and he does it so that he doesn't feel disappointed in himself. And when the father and son have a moment to talk, Mayor wants to know why Devin never told him and he was forbidden to. It was against the Grid Battle Force rules. Now I've been saying this in several episodes throughout the season, but they never made that clear or explicit until very late in the season. They sort of very hinted at it without actually saying it. I mean, we saw the Rangers trying to hide their identities, but we never were shown why. I mean, early in the season, Devin was hiding on purpose because he wasn't ready to face his dad about it. That is one flaw I would have about the season overall. They just didn't explore that angle or just laid it as a ground rule from the start. Especially when they're acting on taxpayer money. <laughs> anyway, Adam tells him that he always admired the Red Ranger, so in a way, he always thought of his son as a hero. And Devin says, you know, just following in your footsteps, Dad. That is a really nice touching moment. <laughs> it shows that both of them always cared about each other and always respected one another. Thing is, Devin just hadn't quite found his path in life yet. And his father just wanted him to get on track to not be wasting his life away. So I'm glad the two are finally able to reconcile. Originally, I thought the relationship between the two was going to be something similar to Wes and Mr. Collins from Time Force. But no, it's nothing like that at all. There's no clash of ideologies or priorities or like that. It's just a father and son who love each other who are trying to understand each other, while also doing their duties as public servants. So this is a refreshing change of pace for the Norman Power Rangers, I like it. Now amidst all this, Evox has a new body, and it's Robotron size, and it's all green and triangular. 
much like his uh, virus form, but not very snake-like. And it is extremely powerful. I mean, he's able to shoot one little blast, it can demorph for rangers. He can also shoot another little blast, and it just completely dismantles the Ultra Zord in one hit. So that's gotta be one of the most powerful villains we've ever seen in Power Rangers. Because we've never seen one that's able to face the power of the Ultra Zord. And all the ones that have faced it have all been destroyed by it. But not Evox. So the Rangers can't even scratch him. And then the Evox grows to giant size. And he's on to this massive teleport that's going to send him back into the real world. Luckily the Razor Zord is undamaged. And Nate says if they can destroy that Morph X Tower before everything can complete, he'll be alright. Then the Evox will be trapped in this world forever. So Devin gets in the Razor Zord and he goes into the tunnels to blow up the tower from beneath and start a chain reaction. Unfortunately, the Avatar Blaze shows up. And he has his own Zord now and it's sort of dragon-like. So the two are fighting out and changing blows. But then Devin just used his Hyper Strike and it instantly defeats him. He don't even counter his attack or he just does the move and that's it. So that destroys Evox's source of Morph X. And meanwhile, Nate and the Mayor make Skrulls run away. He teleported to who knows where. But he did leave his computer behind. Nate messes with it to stop the teleportation. But not before this digitalization phase of the teleporter, whatever that does, finishes with Evox. So his giant form vanishes and just spreads away. Which is weird, I thought they would have a little more fighting with him. And after that, they all have to run to the cyber gate while it's still open before things really ex collapse on them. So all but Devin come out. So they don't know where he is, so the mayor starts walking towards the cyber gate again. Almost as if he's gonna run back in after his son. But fortunately, Devin bursts through and he's okay. At the last second. So that proves to be unnecessary. And then the real Blaze wakes up. Because the Avatar is gone. He doesn't really do anything. He's just awake. And we don't see the real Roxy do anything either. It would have been nice to see a little reunion with him. But of all, it'll be time to celebrate. Maybe that'll be the next episode. Because we have one more before this season is ended. So that might be their celebration. Now in the aftermath of this. I think this thing is taking place a week later. I'm not sure. But they may have presents the team with the Coral Harbor Medal of Valor. And they sure as hell deserve it for all they did. And to make it more fun, Steel gets excited and he wants to take a selfie with everyone. Because that's what people do when they celebrate big occasions. They take a big selfie. But while he's doing that, Mayor's holding his hand is going purple. And he's not really sure what it is. Now if you remember, Roxy's avatar was purple when she got blown up. So who knows, did Evox infect him due to all the messing around with the cyber gate and the way he was ha half digitized and teleportation? Maybe his data went into his body somehow? Nanomachines maybe? We don't know. Is he going to possess his body? Is it going to be like Dino Thunder with Anton Mercer and Mezogog fighting for control? And where did Scrawls run off to? There's a lot of unanswered questions here. And it's probably a setup just to make the second season of Beast and Wolfers more interesting. But overall, this is a great episode. I mean, we got to see everything. We got to see Ben and Betty be super serious and super confident. We got to see Commander Shaw combine both her motherly and her military side into one super badass hole. Finally got some resolution with Devin and his dad. And it was really nice. And plus, it seems that the mayor's gonna have a much bigger role in the second season. Supposedly. We'll see. We got to see the Ultra Zord. We got to see the Ultra Zord destroyed. Yeah, there's no way Evox is gone. Something that powerful is not going to fade away so easily. We got to know that Blaze is okay. So yeah, a lot of good stuff this episode. I really like it. Now, I'm not going to give a full review of the season yet because there's still one more episode to go. But if this was a season finale, it would still be a really great one. So I totally recommend seeing it. So I'll give my full thoughts on this season next time when it's a true season finale. But until then, this has been Jargus. Thanks for watching, and let the power protect you.